Welcome back to the wizard shop. I promised you guys I had another vehicle purchase in process and this is the result of that. I just got this little cube here. We're going to take a look at it, put it on the lift. Let's get started. So here we are with a 2013 Nissan Cube and I know some of you guys think what are you thinking, Car Wizard? Are you, this is a crazy purchase. That's what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? This thing is ridiculous. It's not ridiculous, Mrs. Wizard. It's cute. It, it, it kind of looks like a transit van and a Mazda Miata made a baby, and that's what it came out as. No, what it's a good van. No, it's not a bad car. It's a good car. I'm glad you're driving it. Okay. Well, we got that settled then. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the camera. So I'll get this thing over to the lift. We can check this thing out together. I haven't looked underneath. I haven't checked anything out. I just got it. So together, let's find out what kind of purchase did I get? So as crazy as this purchase sounds, I really like the cubes. I like the utility, the fuel economy, and the kind of artsy look that they have, the asymmetrical look that they have to them. They're actually a very practical car. If you read a lot of the reviews, People mention if you can get past the quirkiness or the weirdness of the car, it actually is a very usable, practical car. This is another EuroAsian buy. I got this from EuroAsian Bob. I was in the market for a Cube. I was looking for a Cube and I really wanted one. And I said, hey Bob, can you find me a Cube? It was like a week later, I got a text with pictures. How much do you want to spend? Is this the one you want? I said, let's do it. I got this one with shipping delivered to my door. 3500 bucks. Really not a bad deal. There are some issues with this vehicle. We're going to check it out. Let's go ahead and get the hood open and look inside. Wow, amazingly, it's clean under here. It looks like a new car. I guess it is a 2013. It's not got a whole bunch of years on it. It has 117,000 miles, which is not terribly much. This is a 1.8 liter Nissan. It's got like 127 horsepower or somewhere thereabouts. It's not a powerhouse, but it doesn't need to be for this car. This car is not about 0 to 60. I'm really impressed with the underhood cleanliness. Everything's in order. Nothing's been modified, hacked, or cut. It's just as it was as it left the factory. Let's get this thing on the lift and see what we got on the underneath. And there's also something flopping around in there. I've seen it's like a little piece of cardboard or... I don't know. I'll have to look into that later. I don't know what that is. So when I actually got this car and I told Mrs. Wizard about it, she actually started questioning my manhood. Isn't that right? Oh, yeah. No, it's not that kind of a car. It's a really cool car. Okay, let's take a look under here. I see some little bit of damage to the plastic there. Someone tried to stitch it together with a zip tie. It's been hit, it looks like. Might be able to repair that myself. I knew that there would be a few problems with these cars. That it's not, I fully expect it. No leaks under here. Not even a drop. I'm very impressed by that. Very happy. Wow. Completely dry and clean up there. See, Mrs. Wizard's not a bad buy after all. We're, we're still in the engine bay. Okay. What about your tires? Nothing loose there. The pads are about half gone. I'll probably put some pads on it. I know when I drive it, the rotors are warped, so I get them either resurfaced or replaced. Check the sway bar links. That's good. Same situation on the brakes there. Sway bar links. That's good. Move on back here to the exhaust. It does have a check engine light on. Catalyst inefficiency, when I know from experience over the years, that's a new catalytic converter, no questions asked. You will never be able to trick it or fool it, you just have to replace the cat. Exhaust looks good, no dents or dings or rust under here. I don't expect there to be, it's 
fairly new. It has a standard, just a solid beam rear suspension. These cars are built to a price point. They were built cheap on purpose. I don't, you just have to know that going in. It's not going to be a, a Lexus or something or an Infiniti. Drum brakes in the rear, again, a cost saving measure. Take a look at the other side. No leaks on the wheel cylinders. There's not going to be any sway bar links because there's nothing. Each wheel doesn't move independently of the other. Shocks look good. Check the spare. And it's good. That shock looks good. Yeah. It's a big muffler for such a small engine. Do you think I did good, Mrs. Wizard? I guess. These tires are made by this company called Barum. Right here, you can see it says Barum. I've never heard of them, but I researched it online. They're made in Czechoslovakia, and they've been around since the 1940s. And apparently, for the price, they're actually a very good tire. Some people mentioned to me, said, oh, you should get rid of those tires, but they drive and ride fine, and they got a lot of tread left on them, so I probably will just keep them for a while. Let's go ahead and lower it down and take a look on the interior. Let's take a look at the interior. Pretty basic, pretty minimalist in here. There's nothing fancy or any kind of climate control or any kind of modules. It's almost like an early 1990s car or something as far as features. It's got a weird wavy dash. Miss Wizard thinks it looks very odd. Looks like a big wave. But it's in good shape. It's not beat up. The steering wheel is in good shape. The leather or whatever vinyl, whatever that is, is not all cracked. It has a cup holder here that I really like. It's actually on the left side. If you look inside of it, it looks like little ripples. You can see those same ripples all over the car, right down here on the speaker. It's a ripple. And right above Mrs. Wizard head is a very large ripple. The whole headliner is one giant ripple, like you threw a, a stone into a pond or something. Some people think that's really odd, really weird, but I think it's kind of neat. I think it's really cool. It's almost like a little pickup truck or a van, but it's not so boring like a van. This vehicle will be competing with the Honda Element as a boxy utility vehicle, but these seats do something the Element doesn't. You can recline way back. Or all the way down. And use it as utility. I suppose there was a seat here. There would be like a child seat, and that's what the seat belt would have been for. But the seat is missing. I'm not going to find the seat or try to replace it. I'm not going to use it, but apparently there was a seat there. But like I said, very Spartan interiors, nothing fancy as far as gadgets. Let's open the rear hatch. Most SUVs or vans or things have doors that open like this, but this one opens like a giant car door, like a normal door. It's got, actually surprisingly, a lot of cargo room here. You could fit boxes, groceries. You could probably put a small refrigerator back here if you wanted to. It's kind of short. Thinking of short, we got through the, the bottom of the car pretty quick, didn't we, Mrs. Wizard? We did. It didn't take very long to get to the end. There's not much length to it. No, oh, no, it's not your typical size. No. Not a land yacht. This thing looks like it's black but it's actually a very dark blue. If you look into the shine of the light or reflecting off of it over here, you can see that it's like a midnight blue, metallic blue. It's a really interesting color. I like it. I like it a lot. Being on a dirt road, dark colors aren't really the best because you get dust on them and then it looks dirty all the time. But surprisingly, it's, these are actually kind of hard to find in good shape. They didn't make a whole lot of these. They made them from, I think, 08 to 14, somewhere around in that range, maybe 07, this generation anyway. And you don't just go out and go buy a cube. You have to spend time and actually find one. There's not a lot of them around. 
Let's take a look around the exterior. This side really doesn't have any serious dents or it does have a ding on the the wheel arch there. You can see a little ding. And then here is the front of the car. It does not have fog lamps. It didn't come with them. It just has little inserts. I'm going to refinish these just like I did on War Turtle. They usually turn out pretty good using brake fluid. Windshield is in good shape. It looks basically brand new. And the hood's not, hood has little scratches here and there, but it's not a brand new car. I did notice that the hubcaps are missing. It's supposed to have the 15 inch aluminum looking hubcaps. It doesn't have any of them. I don't know why they're gone. Maybe someone liked the black steel wheel look, but I, I've got some on order. I'm going to put the actual hubcaps back on it. Let me look around this side. There's some scratches here. I'm not sure what happened there. See little scratches by the door there. This little light floppy in there. I can probably just glue it back in or something. And there's kind of a mismatch here. Probably just needs to be... I imagine they probably crinkled something here and that's what also made the light to be floppy. You can see a, a sharp point there. But otherwise, it's in actually very good shape. It runs and drives like new, but it's a 2013, so I kind of expect that. But everything works on it, everything. So I'm really, really happy with it. Got it from EuroAsian Bob. He came through again, guys. He always does. So Car Richard, I guess it's a nice car. Um, I kind of have to like it because this is my ride home tonight, but you forgot the elephant in the room. This guy's got a CVT. Right, it has the really bad reliability Nissan CVT. And I knew that going in, you could actually get a manual transmission in these, but just like with War Turtle, I don't want manual transmissions anymore. I'll take my risk with a CVT. I probably wouldn't buy this car based on the CVT, just like I've recommended to you guys not to buy one, if I had to pay someone to replace it if it goes out. As it sits, it, I guess it doesn't shift, but I guess, so to speak, it shifts perfectly. It does everything that it's supposed to do. I will be servicing it with new fluid and going through and make sure it's serviced properly to try to extend the life of it. But if it were to fail on me, I'll just get another one online and put it in myself for free. It so wouldn't be that bad. how much would that actually cost though? How much do you think? Probably a couple thousand dollars. Wow. But if someone had to pay to get that done, it might be as much as 3,500 or four. Wow, and that's the cost of what you just paid for it. Yeah, it's more than what we paid for the car. It wouldn't be worth it on in that aspect, but based that I'd be doing the work and I could get the probably the transmission at wholesale cost, I'm willing to risk it. I don't recommend you guys risk it if you can't do your own work, but I'm willing to do it myself. What's the failure rate on a CVT? I'm not sure of the numbers or the percentages, but I know I've replaced a few in the years that I've been working on cars, and I haven't replaced 30 and 40 and 50 of them, it's just been a few. Even if the percentage is only 10%, there's that chance that you could get slapped with that $4,000 bill. Nobody wants to risk that, so. This hopefully is the other 80 or 90 percent that's no trouble. Crossing my fingers. Yes, me too. Okay, So I'm glad you guys could follow along and check out QB. I've named it QB. QB. Yes. Okay. QB. Yes. That's QB, adorable. that's its name. So if we're at home, I say, I'm going to take QB. You know right, what I'm right, talking right, about. I got it. It was just the cube part, but you're, you're cute. Tyler of Hoovy's Garage actually likes this little vehicle. He says it reminds him of the Star Trek Borg Cube. And he is a Star Trek He's absolute fanatic, like almost oh. worships Star Trek. And he likes the whole cube thing. So I guess I could see that. It is a box that travels. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for following along. Check this thing out. All my tools I use in the shop and also that where things we're doing on the yacht are listed in the Amazon Affiliates link in the description below. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I really recommend you do. We've got a full shop. Lots of really good content to come. Thanks for watching. Yeah.